All right, Jim. Here's a uh, here's a follow-up question uh, uh, related to the question we we just uh, previously answered. It's a it says it's from Michael L. You've alluded to the, alluded to the company's 50-year plans before uh, on other shows. Do you have any idea what these plans look like for each park? Um. Well, I mean, if we're talking studios. Um, that actually, there's so little actual production that's being done at Disney Studios these days that that they're talking about just basically taking everything that's behind uh, Pixar Place and the old animation building and flattening it. Uh, you know, if you've done the Tower of Terror 20k or excuse me 10k, you, you know, you've run around that park, you've seen how much of it stands empty. Um, you could definitely bump that out. Um, <sighs> Epcot, um, boy, uh, I'm, this is the one I really hope doesn't go forward. Uh, because basically, I mean, think about it. We've just run out of uh, places to put DVCs on Seven Seas Lagoon. Um, yep. We're looking, you know, they're, they're obviously looking at throwing something in River Country, uh, you know, I mean, that one actually keeps bubbling up because the, the concern is that, uh, you know, that, that DVC has to keep moving forward. Yeah. Uh, it's See, a shark. And so hold on. So pause it for a second. So uh, I was at uh, Fort Wilderness two mm -hmm. weeks ago and yeah. was walking back from Wilderness Lodge. Remember the walk you and I did? on yeah. the uh, Okay. So I was walking, doing that walk, but back at night. Mm -hmm. And I missed, uh, I missed a gate that was apparently only open to cast members. Because uh, mm. it was dark, and you know you're walking back behind the woods and everything. But anyway, I ended up uh, behind the gate at River Country. Oh, Ooh, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing: it's, I mean, all the concrete in the pools is cracking. They, they, mm. they there's literally nothing salvageable. It, I think it's a complete rebuild if they want to open that. But it was, uh, it was fascinating. It was looking, it was like, the, the walking through it was like walking through Chernobyl, where. Mm. It was funny because there were there were certain section of it where they literally just left everything the way it was. There were there were chairs pulled up with plates on tables, and people just walked away. It was really it was like on the last day, it's like, well, why do we need to clean this up? We're just closing the park. Mm -hmm. And you know, plastic lawn chairs out. Anyway, so uh, so River Country. Well, the notion isn't necessarily to take the old River Country site, build a DVC on it, mm -hmm. though the, the the intriguing story that's been bubbling up is that this DVC's um, main appeal would be that it would have a water feature that would be very, very reminiscent of River Country, that you know the resort oh. would offer the spectacular view of Bay Lake and have this water feature. Um, because that's the other thing, frankly, is that whenever they put it on the table and, you know, then start to explain to the, the groups of people that are doing the surveys, you know, that, well, it's still at River Country and you're still going to have to take a boat over to the Magic Kingdom. You're still going to have to take buses to get to the other parks. And yeah. people's interest in the resort starts to tank when they realize that how long is it going to take me to get to the kingdom? How yeah. long they have con it's and, two buses, and, right? Two buses yeah. to Epcot, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just sort of like, you know, you got to give them something pretty spectacular to make them want to not just stay there but buy into the place. And the only thing that seems to sort of, you know, get their enthusiasm up is the notion of you have your own little private river country and you can then sell to the people who are nostalgic about having stayed at Fort Wilderness. Huh. Um but the the downside of it is is that uh, it just it, the number of units they're looking to sell or the number of units they're looking to build, um, it's just at this point it's not profitable. It doesn't make any sense from a business point of view. It's like a couple hundred, I heard, right? Yeah, you know, yeah and so think about it when you, yeah. you you compare that to what you've just built next to the flow or you know that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know. It, that's but, again, because you're running out of places to put DVCs, one of the places they're now talking about is Epcot. And, <sighs> it, well... It, I would totally buy a DVC rental in, in World Showcase. Oh, my God, sign me up right now. Well, th that's what they're thinking. But the, the notion is that you would have to... In fact, the, the scenario I've heard floated from a couple of different directions is 
is if you know um, the Point Vista Drive, you know the mm-hmm. the street that Epcot backs up against. That it's mm-hmm. you know that there's the fire station that backs up against Epcot, and across the street is Caribbean Beach. Yep. Uh, the notion is relocate the fire station to some place a little more centrally located. That's easy. Uh, now you have a way to access off of your main drag there mm-hmm. a hotel that you then build behind um, the American Adventure, Japan, Italy. And, and the notion is you'd build a uh... building that would support the story of the buildings there that are in front of them. And there would be various little towers that would stick up that would allow you primo views into the park for the fireworks. So it's like building a second berm. The hotel would be like a second berm outside of Epcot. That's it, exactly. Oh, and, but, you, okay. but at the same time, you have to be respectful of the perimeter road there. You know, you have to figure out, well, what are you doing with the perimeter road? Are you sinking the perimeter road and it goes under the ho- this massive hotel? Yeah. Um, or, you know, are you basically building your hotel up on top of the perimeter road? Uh, tunnels. You know, tunnels are where it's at, Jim. Yeah, and but but the, the idea of you finally give guests the opportunity that, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever the iteration of reflections of of the world or you know the whatever version of illuminations is showing at that point, it ends and for the first time ever, well, everyone else has to begin that impossibly long walk out to their car. You turn around, and in two minutes you're in your room looking yeah, you out the your window. Room. Yep. That's a uh, great idea. I wonder what those rooms would cost. Um, so, uh. but, but again, it's just that, that you have to sort of commit to the notion of if you're going to do that, how much disruption are you willing to do to the operations of your theme park? Um, and yeah. I, but again, with the 50 year plan, I mean, face it, you know, um, 10 years ago, if, you know, somebody told you about, you know, peeing on your iPhone and, you know, being able to, whether it's make dinner reservations or check in for your airplane or that sort of thing, guessing what technologies we'll be using even in 10 or 15 years yeah. does reflect the fact that, look, you can make big decisions of what you're going to do with land use, but the reality is what we think of for entertainment, you know, how we're communicating at that point is going to impact the sorts of ride shows and attractions that we build. 15 years ago, we were all watching Friends <laughs> on on Thursdays at 8 at 8:30 because that's the only time it came on. And, and <laughs> remember, Len, you could really rock the Rachel. It was it was a great look for you oh, at that time. Oh, so. I remember it was the highlights. Ah, anyway. <laughs> so, all right, thanks, Jim. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm.